Hi everybody, we're going to talk about what's on. So today I'm wearing the Armory's three pocket blues on. I'm wearing an Ascot Chang button down shirt, a pair of our sport chinos in olive cotton, a pair of our Duane II loafer in brown grained calf. Um, for my eyewear today, I've got a pair of Ann and Valentine glasses. And for my wrist check today, something very special to me personally, um, a Christian Klings. I will come back to this watch a little bit later because it, it has a story. It's cool. Uh, so why am I wearing this today? Well, uh, we are, you know, entering into fall winter, but the weather is not quite cooperating. And so I've retreated back to my summer wardrobe. Uh, but, you know, given that it's Monday today, I want to also wear something that just felt a little bit more put together without necessarily being tailored clothing. And I wanted to wear something that's a little more put together, but a little bit lighter in weight as well. And that's really where the three pocket blues on comes in for me. You see, when I first designed this with the team, um, the idea of the three pocket blues on was to have something that could substitute for tailored clothing, um, but maybe without as much of that sense of that classic classicness to it. Um, you know, you put it on, you wear it with a button-down shirt, a pair of cotton chinos, a pair of loafers, and it feels still very presentable, very detailed, something that's very appropriate for workplaces, especially workplaces that don't necessarily need um, tailored clothing. You know, if you're an enthusiast of tailoring, um, you obviously would love tailored fabrics. You know, beautiful sport coat fabrics and all those different kinds of materials like wool, cashmere, cotton, mohair, vicuña, mink, See, I'm trying to think of how many I can think of. Silk, uh, linen. Uh, we can make uh, three pocket blues ons as well as many of our other casual pieces to order using these tailored fabrics. And uh, so, you know, if you wanted to keep that feeling of tailored clothing alive without necessarily using specifically a tailored garment, things like three pocket blues on could be a good option for you. Um, Oh, and also the fall winter three pocket blues ons just arrived and they look really good. So check them out. They're on the website now. Now, speaking of fall winter, a uh, couple of announcements. So firstly, we're going to do our first ever live stream. We're going to do our first ever live stream. It's going to be on YouTube live rather than IG live. Uh, and it's this Friday at 10 a.m. Hong Kong time slash 10 p.m. New York time. Um, so that'll be Friday morning, Hong Kong, 10 a.m. and Thursday evening, New York, 10 p.m. You know, the reason why we're doing it on YouTube rather than Instagram is because uh, we just found the color and the quality of the video on IG not as good as YouTube. Um, and, you know, obviously we're looking at clothes, and so the color and the resolution of what you see is very important. And I think that um, YouTube would be a better option for this. So check it out. We would love to see you in attendance. If you have any questions you'd like to ask in advance, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, feel free to just ask on the day. We will be interacting as much as possible with the live chat. Okay, other things that came up uh, or have come up in the last couple of days, uh, our fall winter lookbook just came out. So my colleagues in New York, Jim Parker, Elliot Hammer, and Kamal Hostin, uh, borrowed a good friend of ours car, uh, Mr. D, who owns this lovely Range Rover, and took it on a little road trip on the Eastern Seaboard in the US. Uh, and so it was really fun to see them get out on the road wearing our fall winter gear and uh, just kind of bringing it to life. It really, really makes me, uh, it really makes me miss the US as well. Um, I haven't been back for a year and a half now, and I just, I don't know, that feeling of being out there, it's, it's wonderful. So to all of you who are out there right now, enjoy it for what it is. It's really, really a special, special thing. Um, the lookbook is on the website right now. Check it out. Uh, and a lot of our fall winter has already started to be released in the stores and online. So you are welcome to purchase as you need. Uh, next thing. Um, Last couple of weeks, you might have noticed we've been doing this collaboration with Philips Hong Kong, so the Philips Auction House. And uh, they have this great auction called Intersect uh, that just launched last Thursday. So the idea of Intersect is that they're putting together um, watches and modern art and just like cool items. And uh, they've kind of curated it all together and now it's available online, available to bid on uh, right now. I'm saying that a lot. Um, available to bid on right now. And we did three parts of kind of these lookbook shoots for them. Uh, so we did two parts where it was our teams uh, doing portraits and kind of doing still lifes, wearing pieces from the auction, like available at the auction. And we did another part where it's pieces uh, that we personally own that are not for sale, but just kind of to reflect our own love for timepieces. And then we did a third part, which I'm especially proud of uh, because I worked a lot on that one myself. Um, 
along with our, uh, our photographer, Edward. Uh, and the idea of the third part is it's just beautiful, high-res macro images of the auction highlights. So what that means is it's like the best, best, best pieces available at that particular auction. Um, so for instance, this for this particular auction, it is the FP Jaune Vagabondage. Uh, it is a Patek Split Seconds, and it is a Rolex uh, Yellow Gold Submariner with a nipple dial. All three are really awesome, and we shot them on fabrics, um, just because like the fabrics add so much color and texture to the watches, and they just, I don't know, they're beautiful. I, at one point, just for fun, I was shooting these things I called fabric landscapes, and it was fun to integrate the watches with the cloth in that way. Uh, so check that out. It is on Philips' website, and it will hit our website at some point as well. I'll link, I'll link it in the YouTube description uh, for this video. All right, two more things. One is uh, the Fall Winter City Hunters. Um, so this year we actually have four of them, which I'm super excited to be showing you, and we're gonna shoot a little introducing video about that in a second. And okay, finally, um, I wanna talk about this watch because uh, I'm really excited I got it. I can't believe I actually received it. I, uh, this gentleman, Christian Klings, is a bespoke watchmaker based in Dresden. He has been a watchmaker since he left school in the, oof, in the 70s. Um, he has made, he's, he's something like a George Daniels, Derek Pratt, like he's very much a one-man band making watches by himself from scratch. This is his 34th piece, and I must add, this is his last piece. He has specifically said, please don't send me any more customers. I don't want to make any more watches. Um, he is a very, very talented man. What he does uh, is just absolutely incredible. And uh, it took him three years. I waited three years for this. And uh, it was somewhat agonizing wait, but I have to say, just so, so worth it. His story is incredible. Um, and the piece itself is incredible. This is what we call an open work movement. Okay, so an open work movement means that there's very few plates like this, and it's primarily bridges holding the wheels of the movement together. Um, it's, it's hard to make these, and it's really hard to make these in this size, because this is actually a little 36 and a half millimeter watch. Uh, he made the guilloche himself, he made the dial himself, he made the hands himself, he made the chapter rings himself, he made the case himself, like the buckle he made himself. You know, like there's, the only things that I think he sent out for was um, the sapphire crystal, for the front and back, and uh, I think maybe the hairspring. Uh, sorry, the uh, the mainspring. Um, I love it. It's it's uh, if you like craft, like there's just something really magic about owning something that only one person's hands have uh, touched and created. It's it's something else. Uh, I love it so much. Actually, I am writing an article about it, and hopefully that will come out uh, in the next couple of months. I can't say where it's going to be yet. Um, but it will hopefully be a doozy. And you know what, if I can't write everything I want, I will do another video because really this man's history is just so interesting. It's really worth everybody knowing. All right, sorry for rambling so long, but honestly, it's such a pleasure to be talking to everybody again. I feel like I haven't done one of these in a while. I hope everyone is well and you guys have a good week and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.